One year ago, we decided we wanted to make a documentary. Two and a half years ago, we went on an exchange trip to the United States of America. We were very keen to find out to what extent this impacts our lives. And we were also curious whether an exchange program should be a mandatory part for one's education. That is why, during this documentary, we wish to share our experience and take you with us whilst we look back on this exchange. And determine what, what impact an exchange program has on us. But before we went on this trip, we had to go through an application process. And that is where this documentary will start. Ever since I can recall, I've always been interested in the United States of America. And I had this image in my head that that was the country of the American dream. And you could reach your full potential there. And therefore, I always had the dream to visit the United States at one point in my life. In order to be selected for the American trip, you had to write a motivation letter in which you described your own qualities. It was, I thought it was very difficult because I didn't know what they expected uh, in the letter because the only um, assignment we got was write a motivation letter and not what, has to, what has to be in it. I was very fortunate when it came down to the selection process because I was immediately selected into the program. But I was over the moon, I was ecstatic, I was very happy. And I got uh, rejected the first round and then I thought, okay, I need to work even harder for my marks. So then I worked uh, very hard for my marks and then I got selected. But I got in contact uh, with the host family like a month, a month ahead, I guess. And um, yeah, the contact was very good and she was a very nice girl and she um, introduced her family uh, uh, before I got there. So that made me feel uh, yeah, relaxed that, okay, it's going to be a, a nice family and it made me more excited. Only I've always had a good experience with planes uh, and I really like being in the air because like you're free of all your problems and you're like free of mind so it's really relaxed in my opinion. Uh, the food it was great we had couscous and it was like delicious um, I wouldn't have made it better myself and like seeing that most of the time airport food and food on the airplane it's most of the time really disappointing so when i got that and it was really delicious i was like very happy because i did not expect it at all overall uh, it was pretty good well my emotion when i first arrived at the airport in orlando was that it was actually very relieved that we were almost there and the moment that the doors of the airport opened I got like a hot fume of air blown into my face and I felt very excited because after all the anticipation I was actually, yeah, it came to realization that I was actually standing in America. They gave me a very warm welcome. Um, the, uh, the host dad said, oh, uh, when you're hungry, just tell me, I will make food for you. Uh, just in the middle of the night, it's okay. And like, they acted like my real family and they had like balloons and my name, welcome Sanne, um, in, at the door. So it, I felt uh, very welcomed. Well, the moment I was allowed to walk up to my family, uh, I remember that we first introduced ourselves to each other. And um, the first real conversation I had with them was when I stepped into the car and the host mother asked me if I had everything. And I was very convincing in saying, yes, I have everything, we can go. And then two minutes later, I realized I forgot my suitcase outside. And the moment I felt really stressed and very nervous. And the only thing I could think about was, what are you thinking of me? Did, do they think I'm very chaotic? And also, I was really suffering from sleep deprivation. So my English pronunciation was very bad that evening. But luckily, when we got at the house, everything was fine. Uh, well, my first conversation, I remember that I was so tired that I could barely speak English anymore. <laughs> like, I was like, I don't know, I'm too tired to talk. <laughs> and then uh, they, they uh, showed me the bedroom. Um, but then I wanted to go to the toilet. And then in the middle of the night, I got lost in their, in their house. And I was like so scared, like, oh my god, how am I going to find the bedroom back? And then I told them the morning, uh, the morning uh, after that night, and they were like, oh, it's okay, you should, you should have uh, woke us up. And that felt like they, I was welcome there. Before we actually went on a trip, I had a little contact with my host family. And well, I created some of expectations based on the pictures they sent me on social media. And when I got there, I actually, when I recognized them, I immediately felt that they were a very nice and kind family and that they were very welcoming. 
So yeah, my expectations really met reality. I think because they are in, a, in an unfamiliar country, usually, and in an in 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 environment that is not very common to them, and maybe even f very foreign to them. Um, and I think that's the whole purpose of the uh, of the exchange, is that students understand that when they go to a foreign country and have to stay with people they do not know, that they, well, they have to adjust immediately, and that uh, develops their personal awareness. There are very large differences, and I think because students stay in a uh, in, a, in a, 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 re a real person's home, they are immediately immersed in that culture, and they have to, for a week long, um, adjust, adapt, and maybe even overcome their uh, cultural differences. Uh, for example, with eating, I, uh, there's loads of students that, and even though it's maybe a silly um, comparison they go to the mcdonald's three times a day and the first day they think that's fantastic the second day they think okay i might have a mixed salad then and then the third day they're like okay they do this every day they go to the mcdonald's in the morning the afternoon and for dinner why don't they eat mashed potatoes with broccoli and chicken um and that that small difference opens their eyes i think to what that culture is about and i think that's such an exchange even though it's a western country show students that there are lo large differences in how western civilizations work and if they understand those differences they can also well move around properly in that uh, in that culture some those who could this year of course no one uh who've been to florida also point out that going to the united states of america gave them had an impact on them changed uh, how they saw uh, different cultures also changed how they saw the United States of America uh, because some have a very positive ID some have very negative ID some have no ID um, but going to these schools going to these families uh, visiting parts of these different countries um, did give them a broader idea of what other cultures are because it's in a subject like history uh, those who have the bilingual background actually pick up certain things like uh, what we call in Dutch standplaatsgebondenheid that they have to look at things from different perspectives they pick it up easier because they've already experienced themselves that their perspective might not be the right or the only perspective there is no right perspective well there is but there is not in general a right perspective uh, the skills that students uh, improve on the most are probably the intrapersonal skills so communication and cooperation um, because they are like we said with personal awareness they have they are alone they have to they just need to make it happen by themselves um, so the communication skills are definitely skills that develop really quickly and obviously also then their cooperative skills because they need to get stuff done so they need to communicate with their peers and maybe even parents um, the skill social and cultural awareness obviously also develops because they are in a new culture adapting to what that culture is and probably also looking at or maybe even sub, uh, subconsciously looking at what are the differences with my culture what are the similarities what can I say here what can I do there uh, so that skill definitely develops uh, and therefore reflective skills also develop there that's just practicing what did I do what did I say what is the effect um, maybe even confidence as well uh, we have some students that are that lack a little bit of confidence but as soon as they are put in that situation where they have to do something and have to communicate um, and they see that they succeed their confidence also uh, um, grows but I think it's important because it ticks almost all of the skills boxes we have within our bilingual bilingual education at Durandal so if we look at the, the, the personal skills that develop, if we look at the cultural skills that develop, the experience of being in a different country and they are developing those skills 
um, and it's very important that's what an exchange is all about I can remember the first time I went on an exchange to America is that I had to stay in a host family as well and I was probably equally um, at the equal amount of anxiety as students had I thought it was quite scary as well and it was also for my own development because at my, in my high school we didn't do these things um, so the first year for me was just s soaking it all up and living the experience um, but then also when I came back uh, understanding why it is so important and what if I could learn something at at that time 29 30 years of age what the, the, the what students of 16 17 18 years old as an experience gain is immense I wanted to continue that uh, and give other students the chances and opportunities to uh, go on this exchange and, and, and experience that as for themselves. And knowing that there are other ways to live doesn't mean you have to change your life, but it does make you more respectful, uh, more understanding. Respectful is not even the most important thing, but more understanding towards other cultures, other habits, uh, other ideas, and also opens you up to develop other ideas. Stressful story. Uh, it's probably the time that we had a four and a half hour layover thinking, this is gonna be loads of time. We can even get food in the meantime. And I think it took us three hours, three and a half hours to get through customs at the airport. And then we needed to go, oh, not customs, through passport security, passport check, and then we needed to go through customs. So Mr. Yoseski and the students, they actually sprinted to the gate and they said, listen, this is half the group. Uh, they are coming, they are still stuck at customs. Um, please don't leave without us, without them. We will board now, but there is still a group coming and luckily we were just in time. We had to run as well. We ran through the terminal trying to catch the train, <laughs> the, the plane. Well, that happens. Living in a host family is a very dynamic experience, at least in my experience it is. Because of course on the one hand there's quite a lot of culture shock that you face and you have to deal with and you have to get over. But on the other hand you are fully indulged into their lifestyle and therefore I believe it is the best way to learn about a culture because you are fully immo immersed into that culture and therefore you pick up their way of living quite quickly. The moment that I met my host family, I was very excited because I had already been in contact with them over the internet, but I hadn't met them in real life, of course. So it was an amazing experience to finally meet them in real life. And I can remember the first few minutes I had gotten into their car and they uh, brought me a meal, Chick-fil-A. Uh, and I can remember I tried to open a package of ketchup and I accidentally cut it all over the car, which wasn't a very good first impression, but it was a funny one. So I guess... <laughs> It's a good story. The first morning after I arrived at my host family, my host student and I um, decided to exchange our own gifts and they were very stereotypical for our own culture. And this was the first moment I actually had a feeling of a cultural knowledge exchange. Um, and the exchange of our gifts um, were actually representing um, the, the exchange of our culture. So, and I think looking back at it now, it gave a very good introduction of what to expect throughout the week. Uh, a difference I noticed between America and the Netherlands is lies in the family dynamics because um, the father of my host, he had his own workspace in a shed which is different from the Netherlands because we don't we keep our lives from work and private apart. Um, this also showed me that Americans uh, live to work, their whole li life revolves um, around work and in Netherlands or in Europe even, uh, we work to live, we work in order to have a, have a good life. And I remember this one distinct conversation I had with my host and it was about schoolwork and I was complaining that I felt, often felt quite overwhelmed by the amount of homework I had and the amount of tests I had to learn for. And my host looked at me in awe and she told me in a jealous tone that I kind of wish I had more homework because that would actually mean I had something to do after school each day. And I can remember that conversation so distinctively because it really changed my mindset and my outlook on life because I got shown a different point of view, a different 
mindset, a different way of living. And it made me realize how grateful I should actually be that I have an overwhelming amount of work, an overwhelming workload, because that in itself is a privilege. And I never realized that. So staying at my host family definitely broadened my horizon and made, gave me insight on my privileged position as an individual. So the parents of my host really put their emphasis, put the emphasis on their work lives. They also made efforts to give me a good time in America. For example, we went to Walmart, we went to Universal Studios, we went out for dinner um, and therefore I got to experience uh, American lifestyle first handed. The day I had to leave, I had very mixed feelings because on the one hand, uh, I got really close to my host family and they really gave me a better understanding of their culture. But on the other hand, I was very relieved to go to Orlando and see all my friends again and go on the next adventure. And now two years later, uh, I still have contact with my host students. And I think therefore we could say that we shared a very unique experience together. Well, I uh, went to the Winterhaven and high school in Orlando and it was very big. The, there were a lot of buildings and in every building you had another subject. Well, the American high school I attended was uh, Summerlin and it was a part of Bartow High School. And I was the only Dutch student that went to that school. And what made it very special about it was that it was the military part. I attended uh, Bartow High School. The main thing that stood out, the school building was huge. I was getting lost on my first day there and quite frankly, by the end of the week, I was still getting lost. Well, I went to Haines City High School um, and it was very different from the schools we are used to in the Netherlands. We got to school in the morning by car. My host mother drove me. But then the extraordinary thing was that we got brought back home by those iconic yellow school buses. Uh, when I went to school, I went by car um, and that was also very different than what I was used to because in the Netherlands we all go by bike. Uh, my host student already had a car and it was so big, um, I think maybe 10 people could fit in there. I think it's not normal to have a Dutch guy in an American high school, so they uh, were all very surprised. I can still remember the first time I entered the school, uh, because the teachers and the students' reactions were priceless. At first, uh, the teachers really didn't know that a Dutch student would come to their school in that week. But after I had introduced myself, they really wanted to know everything about me. And I felt very popular at that moment. I don't want to be mean, but quite frankly, the questions were just dumb. Do you have Wi-Fi? Do you have electricity? Do you know what this and that means? I was so shocked to find out that the American students really thought that European people were so outdated and it was just, it was shocking. They were obnoxious about the way we live in Europe. And I didn't really expect that because we all live in the modern world and America is not that different from Europe. And um, the questions were just really funny. And um, I felt very appreciated because everyone gave me attention and was curious about my life. The different classes I attended during the whole week uh, were for example, math. And it was a really weird experience for me because their educational level is far below our educational level. So for example, I had to explain math to them. I was, I was appalled by the level of education there. It was, it was shocking, shockingly low. Look at, um, at the general school day, um, there are some differences with the Netherlands because uh, the school days in the US start earlier at 7, 7 a.m. Um, but, but therefore it also start of, uh, ends earlier. Um, and afterwards, uh, my host did theater and just like sports, the extracurriculars in the US are intertwined with school. I had act uh, acti activities after school, but my uh, host didn't have those. So uh, we just uh, visit some friends of him. Uh, we went to Wendy's or Burger King to eat something. Um, and then we came home. He ate with his father, he had his own restaurant, so he could cook very well. So that was nice. My host students had um, a volleyball training in a gymnasium at their own school. So she was playing in the school team and that was where my day rounded up. Well, there were actually two things that really stood out in the week that I went to the high school. 
And the first thing is actually the safety on the school. I got a school tour from the safety guards um, that worked on that school. And she told me about that she had to protect the school from school shootings. Well, that really surprised me and it kind of shocked me also because we don't have something like that in the Netherlands. Actually, our, safe, uh, our school is quite safe. And the other thing that really stood out was the fact that in, the, in that week that we went there, it was homecoming. Yeah, it was spirit week during that weekend. What that entailed was that it was the week leading up to the homecoming uh, prom. And therefore, every single day of the week was a different theme in which the students had to dress up. So for example, one day it was nerds versus the jocks. So I actually started joining in with the dressing up at a certain point of the week. So I was wearing the school colors and I was getting into the school spirit. And that was so fun to see, especially seeing how all the students and all the teachers were joining in. And you could really see that there was a lot of school spirit at that school and people were quite close and they were proud of the school they were representing and therefore they weren't scared to dress up and go to school in a silly costume. Whereas in the Netherlands, I don't think many people would actually go to school wearing a nerd's costume, for example. Um, and then we also went to prom at the end of the week on a Saturday, which was very cool to experience. But to be fair, in the end, it was quite comparable to a Dutch uh, dance. Uh, out of all the activities, the one that I enjoyed the most was uh, when we visited the Kennedy Space Center from NASA because, well, I am very, I'm quite interested in um, space and aeronautics and stuff like that. So it was, first of all, very interesting for me for that reason. And also because it was with the entire group and that just made a lot of fun to just meet new people I've never spoken to before and just hang out with friends that I already knew before and that all together just made it a very enjoyable experience. The activities I enjoyed the most was probably uh, Cocoa Beach and uh, NASA. Um, that's because we had a lot of freedom in NASA. We could wander around like for two hours uh, for our own and we, I remember we we was we were running around the shop like picking everything up and <laughs> choosing what we wanted to buy, and um, Cocoa Beach was a, a, a lot of fun. We yeah we swam around three hours straight I think. <laughs> um, the activities I enjoyed the least um, was Publix. You know we we had a kind of program which was a bit boring. Yeah, I think that. Most of the activities were very suitable for the locations that we were, um, for the locations of the trip. Um, because I think the only two um, exceptions were the, the potluck dinner. And that's simply because, I mean, that can be uh, arranged anywhere. So it doesn't have to be in a specific location for it to be uh, more enjoyable. And also the, the Publix tour, because that didn't really show us anything um, that was special to the Florida and the place that we were staying at. But the, um, when we went to the alligator park, that was just very interesting because we had never seen a wildlife reserve uh, as something like that before, I think all of us. And also the, the football game at Bartow, because football isn't as big in the Netherlands as it is in America. And also, uh, of course, the, the Kennedy Space Center and the, the beach. Because although the beach is not that special, it's still um, it was still a very fun activity because um, where we were staying at, it was very close to the beach. So that made it very easy for us to go to the beach. And something like the Kennedy Space Center, you don't have that every, everywhere in the world. So that's why it was a very fun activity because we had the chance to do it. I think some activities fitted well, but also some activities didn't fit that well. Um, the public's um, activity, yeah, didn't fit at all in Orlando. Um, that's because you know it was a kind of tour, and you know we hate tours when we are in America. You know, we want our freedom. We want to to walk around, and um, yeah, it was in a kind of um, a big factory. Yes, it was a factory, and yeah, it was just very boring. And, <laughs> and after that, we yeah, it was a ice cream factory, and I remember we. Small 
um, ice cream we got and that was it and that took two hours or something in the whole program and um, I think um, the alligator tour fitted well it's because you know the location was perfect with all the activities put together it was a very excellent experience and because of that I never really had the feeling like I was missing out on something and that also might be because beforehand I didn't have a lot of expectations about Florida because I didn't I just simply didn't know a whole lot about Florida but that also caused me to see the activities that we did to um, think of it as um, uh, yeah that it would um, complement the the trip very well and because that I didn't really have a lot of expectations I never really had the feeling that I was missing out because we did we did not do a certain activity of course I made a lot of fun memories during the trip but one uh, uh, but one really a funny one was when we went to the wildlife park um, I wasn't really dressed for the occasion because that same morning we went to the Publix factory um, so I um, I dressed myself thinking I, I would keep it a little bit formal not too formal like not in a suit but formal clothing so not beach clothing but I didn't have any reserved clothing with me so when we were at the uh, wildlife park and the sun was shining a lot and it was very hot but I, there I was in a t-shirt that I got from the school so the the size was all wrong so I was wearing a t-shirt that was almost a dress and I was also wearing long jeans so it was just way too hot for me but in the end it was my own fault but I think that was really funny to remember Starting with the competences that I improved the most upon, I think I immediately go to communication and confidence because uh, in a country like America, there are not a lot of people that speak a language like we do, like they don't speak a lot of Dutch. So instantly that forces us to speak English and um, that forces us in such a way that we simply do not even have a choice that only with the rest of the people that um, went with us on the trip we could speak Dutch but with no one else with everyone else we had to speak English and so because we were forced to speak English to me it feels like that also is a reason why I improved upon that the most and I think I was most insecure about my presentation skills and that's simply because um, uh, even like when we have presentations at our school um, it, it still makes me a little bit nervous, but it's not too bad because I have seen the people that I do my presentation for at least once before in my life. But when we were in America, even though I did my presentation only once, um, they were all new people to me. So that made it, that made me quite a lot more nervous than I would normally be for a presentation. And I think the most valuable competences are actually, I think for most of us, um, just like the competences that I, that I improved upon again communication and confidence and that's simply also because we were forced to speak English so we had no other choice than to speak English um, with our host family and with just people that we met on the street and I think that's why those sort of communication skills are the most important and most valuable during the trip so how did my time in Orlando feel like for me well I really liked it because um, we like parted from the host family and it was really nice to uh, have something relaxed like we went to the beach and we saw NASA which I really liked um, because it's quite cool um, I also liked the shopping mall but I would have liked that we had a little more time because it was a very big shopping mall and overall I really liked the environment of Orlando and it looked a little different from where I stayed with my host family, so it was a nice variation. All the activities um, organized by school in Orlando um, were very nice, but I think my favorite one was the alligator tour. This because uh, we were uh, able to walk free around the park, um, and that way we could start conversations with people, and I really got to know some people. Um, had interesting conversations and it was overall just a fun experience because we took many photos and it was very fun. Because of all the free time we had, um, I, I really felt independent because we were allowed to go everywhere we wanted to and we were uh, allowed to make our own decisions and this brought forth a, a really a feeling of independence. 
because of this feeling of independence, I also think I've grown on a personal level because um, I know what I can do and where I can go. And um, getting more independent also means growing personally, I think. So I personally thought there was a very big difference between the ho uh, host family and the activities we did there and Orlando because the host family, um, you were really staying with the family, that's first, and also everyone did other activities because it depended on uh, who your host family was. With Orlando you were more with your classmates and uh, the activities school organized and you were more independent and you didn't really depend on a family, you did more what you wanted yourself and I think this is positive that you had two different experiences um, because you can learn from it more, that's one and it's also very nice as variation that you have the opportunity to, to see what differences um, it maybe could have to uh, stay in, a, in your own family and in another family in another country. During our time in Orlando, I also feel our group has changed because I got, really got to know some people um, over there, which I'm still friends with. And I think that wouldn't have happened if I didn't go on the America exchange. New York, of course, it's like really big picture in your head. You're like always thinking of very big uh, buildings and like a great impact also because of 9-11 and because of the Statue of Liberty. Uh, so like I was very excited to go there and like in the Netherlands we don't really have something with buildings that high or like uh, at night the lights were very bright and still everywhere you could go and the shops were still open and like in the Netherlands we don't really have anything like that so yeah I was uh, really excited to go there. I expected it as a, a very different uh, city it is very big high-rise buildings uh, I think I've never seen something like that before. Um, I thought there would be a lot of famous people as well, uh, big businessmen, uh, so everyone would be uh, nicely dressed, uh, uh, working hard, going from uh, their, their office to their homes and uh, not really, uh, I didn't really realize that there also were people living and stuff. I really thought this as people were working there and uh, fe fe uh, famous people uh, go there and stuff but it's just like a normal city but then bigger and I think my expectations are based on the, the movies we see uh, but also the newspapers so the things we uh, we see in the Netherlands uh, like the news from Donald Trump and stuff we see on, on uh, videos on Instagram social media also some people, uh, famous people that go to New York and uh, post something on, on Instagram. Well, I think uh, in Orlando the activities were a lot less strict. For example, the nature park, we were like free to go wherever we wanted uh, there. And like the only really real thing we had was like a timestamp of how long uh, we could go there. And well, in New York, um, the group could very easily get split up and someone could get lost so they were a lot uh, more strict about staying together and like everyone had to be at the same place at the same time um, so that's why I may also have ha had more uh, fun in Orlando than in New York itself with the activities then well, I think the, those places are very different we did a lot of other things uh, so in Orlando it was really uh, two days of relaxing. Uh, we started with the high school week, so we were all alone at a host family. And then at Orlando we came to um, sleep, uh, to, uh, to rest, to uh, take a swim in the pool. Um, so I think at that time the group uh, really um, came together and uh, I think because we were in a small group, uh, you really talked to everyone. I didn't saw 
uh, that people that it was a small group that went to there and a small group to there but it was like really the whole group did something together and in new york it was just a very different experience it is you had to see some things it was like a, a city trip with uh, uh, just a, a, a very small time we had and we had to do a lot of things so uh, we had to run to there and then go to this empire state building and then visit the trump tower and then go to 9 11 and uh, we stayed as a group uh, at orlando but also at new york so the group dynamic was really pretty much the same i think uh, my eventual thoughts were partly met with my expectations because uh, indeed like my expectations were uh, the buildings were very high and way higher than here in the Netherlands and like also very bright lights at night on all the buildings so that part was met but it wasn't fully met because I expected more of it because of that's probably because of all the hype the media gave it I expected it to be even more than what it really was so it was not really a letdown I would say but it wasn't uh, fully meeting my expectations I think the trip to New York was a, a life-changing experience um, you will never forget something like this it's very different from what you used to the cities is around um, my um, um, space where I live uh, it's very small and New York is I think one of the biggest cities I know uh, for now um, you also get to know people that think about things differently than you so also for your cultural awareness it's um, uh, some things changed um, yeah it's the buildings you see it's something that you, you never saw before so it's something you will never forget I think so my favorite activity in New York was Times Square because um, yeah, it's just something that you see since you were a child and you just want to see how it looks and it was just very cool especially at night all those lights and advertisements so that was my favorite activity my least favorite activity was um, the Guggenheim Museum well <clears throat> honestly the whole trip from Orlando to New York was just very tiring for me and um, so I was just very tired so it was very difficult for me to to ab absorb all the information and what I remember so it was quite scientific and yeah so I did not really have energy to listen to that I was very excited to hear that we would go to the 9-11 museum I've always been very interested in 9-11 and what happened that day. Uh, I've watched a lot of documentaries and read a lot of articles about it. So I yeah, knew exactly what happened that day. So it was very special for me to visit it. Uh, my first reaction when I heard we will go to 9-11 was, um, yeah, it's something quite famous. Um, I did not know that much about it. Um, only I knew what it was, but not exactly what happened. I already knew a lot about 9-11 because of the documentaries that I watched. But the thing that I learned in the museum was that the uh, families of the people that uh, uh, passed away on 9-11 also had their own story about the day and how they felt about it. Um, well, I wasn't very, like I said, interested in it. Uh, not as much as others were. Um, and I also was very tired because of the trip so nothing really made a lot of impact on me and um, but I did hear something about that there were also like real phone calls during the event and I, I personally did not hear that uh, but I'm sure that if I would uh, it would m have made quite a big impact on me 
even though I wasn't alive when 9-11 happened, it did make a big impact on me. Uh, the things that happened are horrible, so it did really make a Im big impact on me. And when I was in the museum, the thing that made the biggest impact on me in the museum, um, there was a room and you could pick up a phone and choose a certain person and then you would hear their backstory and the, the stories of the families. I was very disappointed that the interviews didn't go through because of the rain uh, because it, I would love to speak to someone that lived that day and experienced that day and ask them where they were uh, at the moment that it happened. So I interviewed a man and a woman, uh, they were partners and um, I remember that I asked them if they knew someone from uh, the, the event 9-11 and they said they knew someone indeed and they were also bringing uh, flowers for that person as a m memorial laying it by the 9-11 monument and um, yeah that made quite an impact on me seeing it from close someone who knew these people and uh, yeah I also did not expect that I would talk to someone who knew someone from that event and with that, the exchange came to an end. And we were very relieved to be back in a familiar environment. But at the same time, we were also very disappointed that this thing we had worked really hard towards came to an end. But luckily, looking back at the exchange now, two and a half years later, those sad feelings have been replaced by feelings of gratitude. And as we are to embark on the next phase of our lives, we acknowledge the significance of this exchange. So therefore, we strongly advocate schools to um, create similar exchange programs to this one. Thank you so much for watching this documentary. We hope we were able to successfully convey our message and enthusiasm about this experience. And if there is one thing you take away from this documentary, please let it be that if you are presented with the opportunity to go on an exchange, to always seize upon this opportunity.